the biggest blockbusters of 2025. F1 the movie, Superman, and Jurassic World Rebirth all have one thing in common. They all look dim. I'm talking about specular highlights barely crossing 300 nits on one of those movies. The other two movies, well, one of them didn't cross 200 nits, and the other one barely broke 100 nits. Actually, I don't think it ever broke 100 nits. Isn't that SDR? While today's entry-level TVs can handle 1,000 nits, with flagships easily pushing over 3,000 nits. And Hollywood's newest, latest reference monitor, the Sony BVM3110, was designed specifically for HDR content, handling peak specular highlights of 4,000 nits. And yes, it was used to grade the movie F1. As a matter of fact, F1 was one of the first releases to ever use this monitor. And so here's the paradox. TV makers keep raising brightness level for HDR content, while the actual studios that make HDR content have gone the other way and lowering the HDR brightness. What gives? Today, we're gonna break it down. Now, before you say creator's intent was to keep things dim, this is why I chose the three movies I did. They were bright, punchy blockbuster movies, not human interest dramas. So let's take a look at these movies and you tell me if you're not surprised by how dim they are. So we'll start with F1 the movie, right? This had potential. First, it was announced that they would be using the BVM 3110 to grade it. So you know, HDR showcase. Second, lots of good night scenes with bright lights. And then during the day, you got shiny chrome, there's potential for this to be quite a splashy action movie. You're visiting all the different F1 venues, right? Nighttime races. And at the end, I'm thinking this is gonna be real exciting, especially after watching the trailer. Oh, I cannot wait. And by the way, I saw this movie twice. I liked it that much, so I couldn't wait for the home release. And then I got it, and then disappointment. The brightest scenes never broke 200 nits. I was thinking, wait, 200 nits? I mean, you got the sun in Abu Dhabi. The sun in Abu Dhabi didn't break 200 nits. You have <laughs> the irony, right? You have Brad Pitt squinting into the sunrise in Baja at the end of the movie and the chrome shining off of that sun. He's squinting against 200 nits. You know, 200 nits is not worth squinting at, but apparently they could have done this movie on the old BVM 310, right? The one that was capable of a thousand nits. Why did they go out and get a 4,000 nit capable monitor when they were planning to grade it at no more than 200 nits? Next up is another action blockbuster, Jurassic World Rebirth. You have bright neon lights, explosions, dinosaurs, perfect HDR material. Instead, the brightest moments, although brief, are capped at 300 nits. I mean, look at these scenes, right? You have the neon lights in a refrigerator. Even this scene where everyone thought would have the most impact, all under 400 nits, maybe just above 300, maybe. It felt that this movie was mastered for an entry-level OLED TV. Another explosive action movie this summer was Superman by James Gunn. And sadly, and this is the worst one, HDR highlights never exceeded 100 nits. All these scenes, bright laser eyes, explosions, right? Fire. 100 nits. It's as if they took the theater version and then just gave it to us as a home release without trying to recreate it for HDR. Here's the sad part. James Gunn did Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Guess what? That movie actually had punchier HDR hitting above 600 nits, right? In these scenes, these are over 600 nits. And so you'd think, wait, James Gunn knows how to use HDR. In this movie, he pulled it back to SDR. 100 nits, my friend, is SDR. Was this intended to be an SDR movie? I don't get it. So he definitely has walked backwards on HDR. Was this a studio decision or was it James Gunn's decision? Either way, I think it made Superman less of a blockbuster in terms of visual impact as it could have been. And the irony gets better. Nicholas Holt, who plays Lex Luthor, the villain in Superman, which we can describe as the dimmest modern HDR movie ever made. Well, he was part of the brightest HDR movie ever made. Yes, he was in Mad Max Fury Road. Look at these scenes that he was a part of. Literally, 
3,000 nits, if not more, one after the next. And yet, he's now cast in a movie that, well, for all intents and purposes, it's not even HDR, although it claims to be HDR. And so you're wondering, you know, what is happening here? Not only are the movies not bright enough, they're getting dimmer over time. So here are the reasons that have been given. The creative intent was limited to the theater screens, right? Movie theaters, they're limited to 100 nits, if not less, right? So Dolby Cinema, around 100 nits, IMAX lower, and modern theaters that are not Dolby Cinema are even less bright than that. We're talking maybe 40 or 50 nits. So with all that in their minds, directors are thinking, okay, we don't need to go higher than 100 nits for a modern theater that claims to do HDR. And then when it comes time to do the home release, the director is done. He's not part of the process anymore. So that's one reason. The second one is fear of consumer complaints. Oh no, the consumers will complain. Bright 2000 nit content will wash out their TV. No, it won't. We're talking peak specular highlights. We're talking tiny little flashes here and there. The entire screen isn't 2000 nits. No TV could handle that, right? We're talking little things that look realistic. 0.5% window, 1% window at most. I think your TV will handle that without the consumer complaining, oh, it's too bright. Let's look at that Mad Max Fury Road scene again. Most of this scene is under 80 nits. It's that one bright part that hits 3000 nits and it's only brief, it's only flashes, and yet it's very effective. Filmmakers know what they're doing. Now this next reason might be more realistic, industry inertia, meaning the entire production pipeline from color grading to production, all of that, has SDR in mind. And so to properly do it in HDR, literally you have to create a different pipeline. And if you don't, well, it's not gonna be done properly. And I think there's a certain logic to that that makes sense. And yet we've had Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, over 600 nits, Mad Max Fury Road, easily 3000 nits or more, two movies that have proven these reasons to be, well, if you don't have the budget, you don't have the budget, but it's there. The HDR pipeline is there. So you can't say, well, you know, we're so used to creating for SDR, we don't know how to do HDR. Then you have the CGI excuse with the green screens and the VFX. So if it's too bright, you might see the seams, right? So when you make it dimmer, it's easier to hide the seams and all that special effects is less special effects and looks realistic. But yet, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Mad Max Fury Road, in those brightest scenes, let's face it, that's all CGI and it worked well and I didn't see any seams, I know they can do it. Which leads me to what I think is really happening. Why has Hollywood not gone brighter, but gone dimmer? And the reason is, I think they don't think consumers notice. It costs more money to make HDR, HDR, right? Once you do one version for the movie theaters, which is 100 nits at best, then you have to do a home release version. Well, you're gonna have to put a whole team together to do HDR properly, talk to the director, the director is done. You have to call him back into the grading room to say, hey, let's make a home release that has HDR impact. It's all like, why do you need HDR impact? I think it's impactful enough, right? And so this costs money. And they're like, well, if consumers don't notice, why, why do anything at all? And, and that's the key. These movies all look great, by the way, but I'm trying to tell you the HDR impact isn't there. And the theaters, or rather the studios, are hoping you don't notice there's no HDR impact. And if you do, and you don't like it, what, you're not gonna buy the movie? And so they have a captive audience that really can't do anything about it, but you can do something about it. So let's go to practical considerations. How does this affect you? Well, at the end of the day, the reason why you're buying the brightest and the best, with the brightest being a key word, is because you're getting ready for HDR content. Well, the studios don't care about making HDR HDR, then so why should you care? Best to take that premium. You would have paid for a brighter TV and get a larger TV. For example, right? I'm going to take my editor's choice TV of the year, the TCL QM6K. At 65 inches, it's like less than 600 bucks, right? Great TV, great price, 65 inches. 
normally, if you said to me, hey, I got a bit more money, should I get the QM8K? Should I upgrade to even brighter high sense or maybe get an OLED? You know what my response would be? If you have $600, get the 65 inch, but you have another 1400, let's say 2000, don't get a brighter TV. Get a larger QM6K. It comes in a 98 inch for $2,000. And so now you're getting the immersion. You don't need the extra brightness because HDR movies are capped anyway. And by the time the studios get caught up and say, you know what? Let's make HDR movies more impactful. It may be 2035, right? There's no predicting. It may never happen. And that's another thing. I can't assume the studios will ever, ever make a bright movie ever again. Because why? It costs more money. It doesn't get people into the theaters, obviously, because the theaters can handle 100 nits only. And so at the end of the day, you're going to buy and download and stream the movies, not because it's bright, but because you like the movie. And so they're thinking, wait, why are we beating ourselves up to make it more HDR impactful when it doesn't have to be? And so that leaves us as consumers buying TVs that are bigger, not brighter. You know, image quality in terms of image processing is important, right? So that's a consideration, but it doesn't have to be brighter anymore. And so at the end of the day, all these dim modern HDR blockbusters, what they tell us is the trend is not good. I used to keep thinking, you know, patience, right? I mean, it was so exciting in 2018, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was over 600 nits. I mean, Mad Max was what, 2015, 2016? 3,000 nits. In a matter of time, all movies would get brighter. I did not expect 10 years later, the movies would get dimmer in HDR. Action movies, right? And so now, my conclusion is, we've all been misled. The HDR hype was that hype. And that hype has misled the TV makers, which leads me to the next video, how the HDR hype misled TV makers into a pointless brightness war. Or watch the rematch of the LG G5 versus Bravia 8, this time uncalibrated. Or check out why the Sony Bravia 7 Mark II might replace OLED with brighter RGB LED.